Dollars and Construct Searches. This podcast is at the Greek and advanced levels. It requires a solid knowledge of Accordance Bible software and Greek. Recently, one of our viewers suggested we show how to move from a grammar to a construct search to examples in the Bible that show what the grammar is discussing. That sounded like a great challenge, so we're going to try it in today's podcast. If you haven't done a construct search in accordance recently, you may want to watch this introductory podcast first by way of review. Once you've finished, return and watch this episode. Here are the resources we're going to need for today's exercise. First, an original language grammar. Here are the ones currently available in accordance. As you can see, I've added subfolders to my library and organized these resources into Hebrew and Greek grammars. Since my Greek is better than my Hebrew, I'm going to use a Greek grammar as an example in today's podcast. In fact, Wallace's Greek grammar beyond the basics. However, the same techniques will work equally well with any other grammar, including Hebrew grammars. Next, the NA28 Greek New Testament. This is the 28th edition of the Nestle Allen text, without the sigla, which is the one we generally recommend for searches. The fact that it is both morphologically tagged and syntactically tagged makes it ideal, as that gives us lots of options for our construct searches. Ideally, we would also have the syntax of the Greek New Testament and the diagram of the Greek New Testament. Finally, if we want to see how these grammatical forms are rendered into English, we'll need a literal translation, I prefer the NASB in this case, and a more dynamic translation. The NIV 2011 with extended GK numbers is a great choice here because of its phrase tagging. For this exercise, I've set up my accordance workspace as you can see here. I have my grammar open on the left. In my case, it's Wallace's Greek grammar beyond the basics. I have it open to conditional sentences because I think they will make good examples for our construct searches. The Greek construct itself is in a separate zone on the right. Behind Wallace's grammar, I have my Greek New Testament, which I've already linked to the Greek construct search. I like this arrangement because I can always see the construct search. I can flip back and forth between using the grammar to create the search and the Greek New Testament to see the search results. I also have four parallel resources open, the syntax of the Greek New Testament and Greek New Testament diagrams. Both of those will help us with syntax. And below that are the NASB and the NIV 2011. Now, when I spend this much time setting up a workspace, I usually save it for future use. I've called this one Greek Grammar Searches, and I've posted a copy of it on our Accordance forums under this podcast number and title. Let's get back to those conditional Greek sentences. Wallace divides them into four classes, the first two of which are shown here. Let's search for examples of the first class. I see that protasis has two indicators, an A and the verb in the indicative mood. Let's build our search by adding these elements one at a time. It's a good way to practice building constructs. First, A. Let's drag the lexeme item onto the first column. When this dialog box appears, we type epsilon iota, select the one at the top of the list, then click OK. Accordance enters the lexeme into the construct search and it looks like this. Now we click search at the bottom right of the construct search and our hits appear. We have 502. We can then review these hit words in context one by one. We can check the way several different translations have handled them. We can glance at instant details to see how each one has been tagged. We can also look at the syntax tree and diagrams to see how each analyzes them. Finally, we can click analytics and choose Analysis to get a good overview. Now, let's zoom into that zone for a better look. Depending on how we have our analysis default set, there may or may not be a lot of information in it. Adjusting our display settings makes a big difference in its usefulness. Each column here represents a hit word in our search, which is helpful when searching phrases. Most of us sort by lexeme, so let's leave that item at the top. I usually put inflected underneath and, here's a really good tip I just learned, putting tag and syntax under that means we can see at a glance how every hit has been tagged. Since we're about to add another word in our search, I'm going to do that in both columns. Here's what that display setting looks like. 
I'm going to make this my default, then click OK. Now look at the difference. Wallace says this kind of conditional sentence also has a verb in the indicative mood in the protasis, though it can be in any tense. Let's add that condition to our search. OK, now there's just one problem with this search as it appears, which you can see if you decide to run it on your own. It will find every verse that has both an A and an indicative verb. What we want are just the places where they appear in the same clause, the protasis. That means we have to limit the search by clause. There are two ways to do this. The first, and most accurate, is to add a syntax element to our construct search. This will work for our present search since our target text is the NA28. However, we don't offer any other syntactically tagged Greek text currently, so we can't use the same search to search, say, the Septuagint. Here's what the construct search looks like now. Notice that both conditions must now be within a single syntactical clause. Now, let's take a closer look at that syntax tree. This nested speech clause is one of the conditional sentences that fits our search criteria. It is composed of two subclauses, the protasis and the apotasis, joined by an aorist active imperative verb. Let's look closer at this protasis, which is classified as an adjunct clause in this syntax tree. It begins with the conjunction A, which meets the first criterion in our construct search. It also includes an indicative verb, which is the second criterion of our search. This verb happens to be the second singular present of a me. This inflected form has the same exact letters as our conjunction, so be sure not to confuse the two. We search for several elements in this protasis. The entire clause includes four levels below it. Since accordance automatically searches one level below the clause, we would have to set the clause depth level at three to include all of its components. The second method is to add a search condition to the text search entry box. Here's how to do that. Click the plus button on the right side of the search entry box. Choose scope and then clause. This will restrict the hits to just the places where A and an indicative verb both appear in the same clause. Now it isn't perhaps quite as precise as using the syntax clause in the construct, but it can be applied to more text. Then let's remove that syntax clause from our construct search. Once we've done that, we click search and survey our results once again. We now have 425 hits. Again, we can now review each hit one by one to see how well each matches Wallace's classification. Let's click Analytics again and look at the new analysis. As you can see, I just jumped directly to the zoom zone. Here's the analysis of A, and where I had to scroll down a bit, we could see the analysis of all the indicative verbs as well. Here, I'll just put a screenshot of it on the right. I apologize for this small print but this is the best shot I could take of the four kinds of conditional sentences. So far, our search has found lots of conditional sentences. However, our results could either be first or second class sentences, as both have A and the indicative mood in the protasis. If we want to isolate just one kind or the other, eventually we're going to have to use syntax in our construct search, like so. Let's separate out the second class sentences. They have four additional characteristics. The indicative verb has to be aorist or imperfect. Any negative has to be may, not u. Third, the apotasis, or second clause, includes an an. And fourth, its indicative verb is in the aorist or imperfect. Here's what a construct search for that form looks like. By the way, notice that I set the clause depth to two. How did I know to do that? From observing how the syntax tree treated these conditional clauses earlier in our study. In addition, before we run this search, we'll have to switch the scope limitation to chapter since syntax searching is currently not supported by clause, sentence, or paragraph. And here's the search and its results. Notice we've identified 17 hits. Reading further in this grammar shows Wallace originally just identified the most common characteristics of these classes, and there are indeed exceptions. For instance, some second-class conditions omit an on. 
In fact, according to the footnote, almost one-fourth of them. If we want to find all second-class conditional sentences, we'll have to build additional construct searches or modify the current one to include them. Both of these things are beyond the scope of this podcast. We just don't have time. We also won't have time to build a construct search for each of the four different kinds of conditional sentences, but I thought I'd provide them for you anyway. Here, again, is a construct search for the first-class conditional sentences, second-class conditional sentences, third-class conditional sentences, and fourth-class conditional sentences. I've posted a workspace with all four of these constructs here. For those of you already familiar with our Accordance forums, it's under Podcasts and Number 162, Grammars and Construct Searches. You can download the workspace from there for your own use. Run these searches for yourselves. How close do you think they come to matching Wallace's definitions? As always, feedback is welcomed in our forums. It only seems fair to mention the limits of what we've done together today. First, these construct searches are based on the general characteristics found in Dan Wallace's Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics. They do not include the variations and exceptions he details later in the book. Second, the negatives aren't included in these searches. To find conditional sentences with negatives, add one or both to the search entry box. For example, link Greek construct number one within two words of ou or me. Third, in some cases, the protasis and the apodosis are reversed. Accordance as construct searches can't currently reverse the order of the two clauses without also reversing the order of the items under the clauses. That means we can't simply check, search both directions, and expect valid results. It's a limitation we're aware of. Finding sentences where the clauses are reversed requires duplicating the construct search and switching the order of the clauses, then rerunning the search. Alternately, we can use both constructs in the same search. For example, link Greek construct 1a or link Greek construct 1b. This second method will find hits that match the criteria in either construct. Fourth, we can modify any of these four general construct searches to include special forms and variants. After putting this podcast together, I wanted to evaluate my own experience. Here's what I found. First, this was an excellent exercise, and it really sharpened my understanding of this aspect of Greek grammar. It's been a while since I studied Greek grammar, and this was a good review. Second, switching from reading the grammar to working in accordance forced me to move from being a passive learner to an active learner. Multiple studies show that active learners are more likely to retain information and are better at integrating it into what they already know. Third, building the construct search, or construct searches, stretched my critical thinking skills. I was forced to do something with what I was learning, not just memorize facts. It was the difference between reading about playing a piano and actually putting my fingers on the keys. Finally, I learned more about accordance and its resources in the process. For example, it really sharpened my construct building skills. I really found myself challenged by this podcast. It's one thing to read a grammar. Putting construct searches together based on its descriptions is another whole level of mastery. Try it. By the time you're done, you'll know each concept inside and out. This has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp.